I'm just getting back from the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event, and can I just start this video off by saying that cloud pink color in the S20 is so beautiful. I actually did fall off my chair with excitement at the event. <laughs> Obviously my favorite color is pink, so when I saw that that was announced, normally I do go for the higher end models of phones, and this pink is only available in the S20 model. So my dreams were slightly crushed, but it's okay. I think that I'm just going to have to deal with it. So one of the things that a lot of people were hinting at and speculating online was that there was going to be an announcement of another foldable flip type phone from Samsung. Samsung surprised everybody by launching a commercial at the Oscars of this. I'm surprised how high quality this feels because a lot of times flip phones like this, you think it's gonna feel kind of like plasticky. But this is actually an ultra thin glass. It comes in three different colors. I have a full video of this on my channel already, but this video is kind of an overview of the flip and the rest of the S20 phones that were launched here at Unpacked. So now onto phones that don't flip or fold. <laughs> so this is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. This is the S20 Plus, and Jenna over there has the S20. Are we ready to do a flip? Yeah. There it is, oh my gosh. Gang's all here. A lot of companies, Samsung included, have really been stressing that 5G is the future in 2020. It's going to become mainstream. I'm not sure if I 100% agree that 5G is going to be mainstream in 2020. I think that we're on our way there. It'll be mainstream when my parents or my grandmother rush out to get a 5G phone. That's when we know it's mainstream, but what I love that Samsung is doing is they are further pushing this 5G agenda forward by making all three of these phones 5G enabled. All three also have 120 hertz displays, a 64-bit 2.7 gigahertz octa-core processor, an all-new camera system. They also all will record 8K video. They have wireless charging and also the power share, which if you've seen that before, you can basically charge another phone using another phone. It's magic. All three each at least have 12 gigs of RAM and you can expand the internal storage up to one terabyte using a micro SD card. The S20 Ultra obviously has some upgrades over the other two phones. So we're gonna go through and compare all three phones, but I wanna start with the S20 Ultra so that we can kind of work our way down so you can compare to see what each phone has in comparison to the other. The top of the line Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. It comes in two colors, a cosmic gray and a cosmic black. Can't decide if I want the gray or the black. I want the pink, but it's not an option. So let me know in the comments below which color you think I should get. I kind of think I like the gray, but I also kind of like the black a lot. It has a 6.9 inch, 120 Hertz AMOLED display. It has a quad camera, which features a 10 megapixel front selfie camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 108 megapixel wide angle. Can we just stop for a moment and just 108 megapixels? Just wanted to reiterate, yes. That is correct. It has a 48 megapixel telephoto lens and depth vision, which allows better focusing and depth sensing. Hybrid optic zoom up to 10X and super resolution zoom up to 100X. Can we just pause for just another second? And yes, I did say a 100X zoom. To be able to get a 100X zoom on a phone, I think is pretty impressive. We saw a bunch of different demo photos and I did get a chance to check it out for myself. Continuing on the specs of the Ultra, 8K video recording, of course that's across all three phones. You can choose from 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, 128 or 512 internal storage, a 5,000 milliamp battery, all with a starting price of $13.99. Next up we have our middle of the line. This is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. This comes in a cosmic gray, cloud blue, and cosmic black and still no pink. I have a very big frown. Like watch this. It has a 6.7 inch AMOLED, 120 hertz display. It also has the quad camera setup, very similar to the S20 Ultra with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 12 megapixel wide angle, 64 megapixel telephoto, also with depth vision. 3X optical and 30X super resolution zoom, 8K video, 12 gigs of RAM, 128 or 512 gigs of storage. Again, expandable to one terabyte with a micro SD card, 4,500 milliamp battery, and a starting price at $1,199. And now for the S20, which is their lower end model. The starting price for this one is $9.99, but this one comes in the cloud pink. I mean, can we just, we need to take a minute to appreciate this color. I'm showing you photos, I'm showing you videos, but nothing really does it justice until you hold it in your hand and you see it with your very own two eyes. My heart melted right there in San Francisco. Isn't there a song about leaving your heart? Or is that New York? Mm. I don't know. Either way, I think I love my heart in San Francisco with the cloud pink S20. It's also available in the cloud blue and the cosmic gray, just in case pink isn't your color. It's fine. It's okay. I'm not judging. I'm secretly judging. Much like 
the internet. It only has a triple camera setup. Only. Like this is 2020 and we're saying, oh, it only has a triple camera setup. Did we ever really think that we would have more than three cameras on a cell phone at any given time back in the day when we first started using cell phones? No. It really was not something that I ever thought of. But the future is here. This model is lacking the depth vision camera that's available on the higher end models. It still has the 10 megapixel selfie camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 12 megapixel wide angle, and 64 megapixel telephoto. It does do 8K video. It has a smaller 6.2 inch AMOLED display. But like I mentioned before, all three devices have 120 hertz capabilities, which is pretty impressive for them to put that across their entire lines. So this really does mean that Samsung is saying, listen, 120 hertz display, and 5G, it's here and we are here for it or you're here for it because we're making it for you. It has a 4,000 milliamp battery, 12 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. Also expandable to one terabyte with a micro SD card if you haven't figured that out by now. One of the things that I'm really excited though is the fact that this phone shoots 8K video and not just the higher end. All three of these phones are incredible. So no matter which one you get, you're still getting a lot of the main features like 8K recording on a cell phone. Really? Is it necessary? No, but do I love it? Yes. Most televisions can't even support the fact that this is 8K. One of the things that is pretty cool is they do have an onboard video editor so you're able to scale down your video so you don't actually have to export it at 8K. You can scale it to 4K, 1080, whatever you want it to be. That's really cool about shooting in 8K is you can also take a still from the video so you can produce a 33 megapixel photo from your 8K video. And one of the things that I do love about when I'm shooting 8K is you're able to take really great high quality screenshots from the content that you've shot because you're shooting in such a high resolution, you have so much to work with. They also updated the stabilization for these new phones. And one of the things, and this isn't just common to the Samsung phones, but this is in a lot of cameras in general, a lot of times it will only adjust stabilization if you're moving your camera kind of up and down, but if it moves to the side, it doesn't really stabilize that well if you're moving things from side to side. That side to side motion tends to not be stabilized. So that is something that was upgraded in these phones. Not only will it stabilize things that are going like this, but it'll go like this, which means if you're going like this, your footage is gonna be extra stable. I think that was a really good demo. <laughs> I'm here all day. I also really love the night hyperlapse feature. This is something that I cannot wait to try out. This new camera system also allows for better low light imaging with a larger sensor. It'll be doubling the amount of images that are being processed to get you the best photos without a lot of light. They also have this new multi ISO composition. So it takes a series of photos with variable ISO and it'll merge them all together to get you the best shot. The new camera system also allows for better low light imaging with a larger sensor. It'll double the amount of images being processed process to get you the best photos without a lot of light. Single take is really cool. So with one press of the shutter, it will take a 10 second video and then kind of package you some content out of that. It'll give you a series of photos, a boomerang like type video, and you'll be able to choose what you want from that 10 seconds. So if something is happening, you won't miss the moment. It'll package you up a ton of stuff that you can then share out to the internet because that's what we all do. I love that they made gaming a focus as well because we have such incredible high powered devices in the palm of our hands. So to be able to take that and just push it a little bit further, they doubled the pressure sensitivity on the screens. So for gaming, this is gonna be amazing because you can be more accurate and quicker in your movements. They also announced that Forza will be available on your freaking phone. Can you believe this? I love this game. I love this game so much. Did you guys play the Forza Lego DLC on Xbox? Because if you didn't, you definitely should. We also were talking about this really cool feature that you can load, depending upon your phone, uh, at least three apps into your phone's RAM. So you won't have to worry about any startup time. It'll just be preloaded and you click and open no loading time. I think that's going to be pretty huge for gaming because I feel like a lot of apps really aren't that huge, like Twitter. Don't think it's going to take that long to load. Maybe things like Lightroom or different games. That's really what that's for. Another thing for gaming, 120 hertz display looks incredible. So I I'm just really happy that they did put this on all three of the models, not to try to convince you to buy the more expensive ones so that you can have the faster display. It's on all three and that pink. Have we talked about the pink phone? How oh. mm. it looks so good. Well, I look forward to checking out these phones more in depth. If there's anything that you would like to know or have any other questions or would like to see in a future video, leave those all in the comments below. I had a really great time at the Unpacked event. It's always so good to see so many of my tech friends. I feel like we all just get to hang out at tech events, but it's always great to see everybody. Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that I'll be posting about these phones. Be sure to like the video, hit the bell. 
I already told you to subscribe, and I think that's all of my homework tasks for you, if you haven't already. I'll see you later. Bye.